Um, so I just start by going back a few years into um, just some of the projects I was doing before this. So this is a picture from 2013, um, which was in a show um, that I had in Arcade Cardiff. And um, at the time, I was just looking at a lot of stuff about memory and interiors, but also a bit at like sort of suburban I guess architecture, but I wasn't really like looking at the architecture itself at that time. Um, and this was just like a sort of imagined landscape within a room. Um, and oh, whoops. Oh, there we go. Um, and then this was another painting from that show, which was showing like sort of more interior elements and. Um, some houses in this sort of expressive but also geometric sort of shapes um, and the whole show was had like loads of houses and all of these sort of interiors that were like mismatched together and sort of all coming from memory um, and a like intuitive way of making the paintings um, so then from that I got more interested in the architecture of suburban houses and things. Um, and this is when I was living in France. Oh. Um, and my partner at the time was looking for a house. So I spent a lot of time helping out with that and just looking through listings and stuff. Um, and I just became really fascinated with these houses um, and the ideas behind sort of suburban sprawl and suburban um, sort of estates and stuff. Um, and thinking about the sense of home itself and houses and what they do for people and how you sort of relate to them. And I got to this idea that they were kind of like a transportative device that when you're in your home or you're in your house or whatever it is, it might be just like a flat or something. Um, but once you're inside that, like the outside world is sort of, it becomes like a fantasy. It becomes like a, a separateness and it's not really anything to do with reality anymore. You're in your own bubble and you're sort of in there or you could be going to your own sort of fantasy world within your house. Like once you get away from life and it's whatever's happening in it outdoors, you're in like this sort of protective, but also like, I don't know, sort of, yeah, transportative space. Um, and the, I was looking at a lot of um, science fiction imagery as well at the time and sort of relating that to the um the um sort of conception of these um suburban houses and things in the 1950s and 60s and how it was all happening at the same time as this sort of space exploration and um science fiction becoming popular so it just sort of naturally went together so that was like 20 were 15 till about, yeah, 2014, 15. And then when I moved back to the UK from France, I didn't have a studio anymore. So the previous works um, I was making at home in a home studio. Um, and they were all oil paintings as well. Like all of the paintings are oil paintings. Um, I haven't, yeah, I don't think there's anything in this so acrylic or anything. Um, so I didn't have a studio and then I got like a field easel and just went out with that because um, I needed to make work and I was getting really frustrated that I didn't have a studio, but that had this field easel. So I just, um, I started going out and just doing landscapes um, wherever really, but mostly around um, where my parents lived in Philly because that's where I was living. Um, and mostly just like short studies. So um, 
a lot of the time it would be cold and I would just go out and I, or I'd look out the window and think like, oh, the light looks really good. I'm just going to run up and do a, a study. And some of them I hated and some of them I liked. And so I would be doing that um, most days. Um, and then I, uh, from there, I, I, did, I did have a studio in between that time. And I did work on a few things, but not anything like a more involved project. Um, so after that, in 2018, I went on a residency to Goa with two other painters, Aidan Myers and Stephen Doherty. And um, I was carrying on doing the plein air sort of stuff and doing studies. But I was also really interested in um, human microbiome and our symbiotic gut microbes and how they affect us and this sort of idea of the gut as a second brain and how it influences our um, experiences and our sort of perception of reality, how it influences our emotions and things. Um, so I made a few works about that before I went to India and then I carried on doing it when I was there. Um, and this painting was um, one of the first ones that I did when I got there. Um, it's just like the view out from where we were staying, the apartment. Um, although that mountain wasn't there, I made that up. I just thought there needs to be a mountain in there, so I just put it in there. Um, and I did some studies and then I just made this more sort of finished version of it and put this big red sort of gut-like thing in it. Um, it was sort of, yeah, like my first, it, the, the painting is called First Impression. So it was like a first sort of experience of India and this overwhelming sort of difference and the heat and the, the landscape and this incredible weather and um, this incredible food as well. So it's a lot of like, shock at well not so much shock at spiciness but actually it was a lot more shock of um how fresh all of the fruit tasted and not like water um so yeah this painting was sort of an expression of that initial impression of being there um and then i carried on making some good things this was also um oh yeah that painting was made in um was also oil but it was on card and then this one is oil and it's on canvas. Um, and this was, yeah, I was heading in a bit more expressive direction, We're getting rid of the landscape and just making it about these gut forms and their sort of expression. Um, and it's another one that's based generally on the experience of being in India and on food again, because um, this pink color was based on watermelon juice that I ended up drinking every day because I couldn't stop drinking it. It was really delicious. Um, and a lot of like watery elements as well, which is coming from the wetland landscape that was surrounding where we were staying. Um, and at the same time, I was doing these bacteria sort of forms. This was like the first point that I decided to make these sort of fantasized bacteria um, as well as the gut things. Um, and this was made, um, this sort of top of a church um, that I saw like the first day we got there. And um, this like neon cross on top, which I was kind of fascinated by that you would have this huge like Catholic church or Christian church and it had like neon all over it I just thought it was amazing um so and I really wanted to paint that so I just painted this little image on card and then I was thinking more about the bacteria and how our symbiotic relationship with them and their sort of presence in humanity um and how they sort of influencing all these huge creations that we have like religion and architecture and those things so I just put them sort of like this horde floating in the background um, 
And then this was another one from India that I moved from that into imagining these huge giant bacterium just floating around in the environment, like to show that um, they're sort of they're sort of omnipresent on the planet and so much depends on them to be able to survive. Um, but yeah, they're completely invisible to us. So I was just imagining if they were visible, just these huge sort of forms floating around. Um, and this was painted on card um, uh, from a walk near to the apartment where we were. Um, and then, so following from that, um, I did some stuff in between that, but then I'm jumping ahead to 2020 now um, with the painting Bacteria Gathered at Avebury, which I showed for Beat 2020. Um, and this was, again, looking at the sort of presence of bacteria and how they've influenced our human culture and our sort of actions that we're sort of unaware that these gut feelings and gut reactions sort of propel us to do what we're doing. Um, so this picture, um, I went on a walk visit to Avebury with some friends. And once I was walking around there, I sort of knew that I wanted to do a bacteria painting because um, I was thinking again, the same things as when I'd seen that church that, um, there's these sort of ancient structures and no matter how far back you go, there's still this like presence that the symbiotic bacteria are there sort of influencing things behind the scenes, but they're never sort of visibly there. So um, I just took this image and then made a sketch with these bacteria in it that I'd made up um, and was a little bit influenced by the fact that the three friends were in the photo that I'd taken of them like looking at the rock. So um, that's why there's three there and they sort of go together in this formation that's a bit like some of those Celtic symbols with three prongs on them. Um, so that brings me back to the show now. Um, and I'll start with one of these smaller pictures. Um, so this group of work is like, doesn't really directly link back to the others, like in the way that the other previous projects have that I've just explained. Because um, I had, I knew that I was going to be doing this show after John arranged it in 2020. Um, but I spent a long time sort of thinking, mm, I don't really know what I'm going to be doing. Um, and then eventually I just came to the idea that I had a lot going on for myself following and diagnosis of autism in 2019. So I thought I'll just make some work about that um, and started researching um, other people's experiences and it sort of led from there. And it just sort of happened naturally that that's what I would make the work about. Um, so this first painting um, is called Trip to Ikea. And in the beginning of making the work, I was, I was like looking for, um, just like ideas to come naturally. And I thought I'll go through all of the photos on my phone and just look at what I'm interested in. And I saw this picture that I had from ages ago that was just a photo of um, an Ikea showroom, like an entire fake bedroom that I'd taken for some reason, probably because I thought I wanted to paint it. But when I looked at the picture again, I saw this little thing in the corner that was the little trim of the carpet didn't match up. And I thought that was quite funny that I'd noticed that. And I thought that's a very typical autistic thing to do, to like pick out this tiny inconsequential thing in a huge picture. So I just focused in on it and then made the painting from that. And um, yeah, I just like, I like the textures as well, like the sort of edge of the, the carpets going together and then this shiny metal sort of thing in the industrial um, that like horrible shiny stuff that you get in like industrial corridors that 
I tried to make it look, look a little bit, well, realistic, but a bit more like sort of cosmic. Um, and then this one um, is probably like one of the more personal ones, and it's made of lots of keys that were keys from my grandparents' house. Um, and I just had these keys um, and held on to them for ages for not even sentimental reasons, but sort of sentimental reasons. It was very like sort of difficult to understand why I'd kept them because they didn't have, they didn't have like meaning in themselves, but they had meaning because they had belonged to my grandparents. So I sort of looked at these keys and was thinking about um, this misconception about autistic people that they don't necessarily have the same sense of empathy as neurotypical people, which we know is just not true. Um, so I just thought, oh, well, I'll make this painting about my sentimental items. And I was doing some studies of just like an arrangement of them. Um, and then I didn't really like that. So I kind of thought I got this idea about um, like a stupid joke on that um, trope about autistic people all being savants. So I thought, oh, I'll just make a picture of like all these keys, just like loads and loads of keys. Um, as like a joke, you know, that I should be able to tell you like exactly how many keys there are. And, you know, we all have these like special superpowers to be able to do these things, even though we don't, that's just savant people, it's not autistic people. Um, so it's got like a few sort of things that are going on ideas wise behind it. And the colors, I just, I just wanted to do them different colors. I just started painting them and I didn't, even though I like the silver and like brass colors of the keys normally, that's why there's some of them are in there. I just wanted to do lots of different colors. I just thought that's more visually interesting. And yeah, I like that. <laughs> so that's why they're different colors. Um, and then this one is another one that's like similar to the seeing small errors or small details before a big, bigger picture of things um, as the Ikea one. But this was taken, I went on a trip to Hereford um, with my boyfriend and we went in the cathedral and there was like a little miniature cathedral inside a glass box. And we walked around it and I immediately saw this little thing that was wrong and thought that was hilarious that, you know, they couldn't get back inside the box and the thing had fallen over and got unstuck. Um, and I'd taken the photo and then when I was looking back to the photos, I thought, oh, that's really interesting, actually, that I didn't notice to begin with this sort of dynamic that's going on between the people, if they were real people. It's like she's she's fallen and it's this sort of weird and embarrassing moment, but we don't really know what's happened. We don't. But it, it, it's something that looks like not an accident or we, we're not really sure what's happening. And we're not really sure the attitudes of the people because they're, they're just little mini characters. They're faceless sort of things. Um, and this like big sort of, you know, like the, the presence of the church and this sort of um, like, what's the word? Societal expectations of what, what you're supposed to be like on a, on a Sunday. And I mean, not that we have that as much anymore, but it's still that sort of like, that idea of things as they should be, but this is not quite right. So um, that's where that one came from. And then this one, um, this one is like sort of a bit different, especially in the mark making and the, the style of it. Um, oh yeah, I should be, probably should have explained yet. Yeah, the two, the three previous ones were oil on wood panel and this is oil on canvas. Um, so I was thinking a lot about um, a lot of research that I'd done and experiences of other autistic women that I'd read about um, and this similar thing coming up about how we sort of learn to 
act in social settings or just in general, like how to conduct yourself in a way that seems neurotypical, which is more popularly known as masking. Um, and I was thinking about, I started thinking a bit more about like making a character, but not necessarily a character to inhib inhabit the paintings. Um, and this is where I'm going to start going into like the paintings that have figures in them, which I haven't had before. I haven't done many figures in my work, but I knew that I needed to have a figure in this. Um, and it's sort of like, I wanted to make the mood ambiguous and a lot of the paintings I wanted to make them ambiguous because there is a lot of ambiguity around people's experiences, especially, well, just in general anyway, but um, autistic people's um, experiences. And a lot of this is just my interpretation of other people's experiences that I've read about with like a little bit of my personal stuff thrown in as well. Um, so I made this sort of natural setting, but there's also like these colours coming that are like not, you know, what we don't know what's happening down there. We don't know what she's looking at. Um, but the sort of idea and watching and learning and this idea about intuitive learning and can you learn to be intuitive and can you, or, or do, you, do you either have this intuition or don't? Um, and there's also like a sort of, um, I guess like a push and pull element between like, is she, um, is she like representing a sort of like primal or primitive sense of being with this like comfort in the natural setting and this ostracization from whatever's happening down there that she's not part of. Um, we don't know. So I, I kind of wanted to make it like, there's, there's a lot of questions that don't necessarily need to be answered to, I guess. But, um, uh, okay, so this one, um, I had an idea for doing a painting like this, like at the beginning with a sort of contorted body and then I decided against it for a while, but then um, made some other work and then felt that actually it was a good sort of fit with the ideas and stuff that were happening. Um, so I made, the, I made a conscious decision to make this a bit more like narrative with um, some of the other ones by using similar colours and this like returning to this like forest theme and this sort of like nighttime theme as well. There's a lot of sort of nighttime um, scenes in all of this work. Um, but I wanted like to make it um, ambiguous as well um, in the sense that we don't, we don't know what sort of time this is happening either. It could be in a narrative that's following on from the other paintings and um but we don't know it, it could be it could be separate people or it, it, it could be um you know um it, it could be that she's fallen or it could be that um she's stretching or contorting in in a like way of self-expression i just wanted to leave it in a way that was sort of open to interpretation. But there are some elements like, um, again, I've made like the bodies sort of in this exaggerated um, sort of fashion. So with the other one, it's like, she's sort of, the body is in a sort of shape that suggests something, but doesn't suggest something. Like she's she's leaning in a way that's, um, like opening the body up, but it's also not opening it up in a in a way that's socially conscious of anything. Um, and the same here, it's it's sort of it's sort of like maybe not fully inside the body, or you know, 
um, fully inside the self or whatever. Um, so this one followed on from this painting, and it's why I decided to go back to the contorted shape um, composition. Um, this was a painting that I um, did from a photo of my friend when we were out for a walk, and she just started doing this stretching, and um, I just thought it was a really like interesting composition uh, that she was she was just stretching and being this sort of natural self and just naturally doing this expression. Um, and that's why I call them um, act natural. It's like this sort of sense that um, a lot of things that we're expected to do or behave in certain ways that we're expected to behave in society um, are supposed to appear natural or they're supposed to feel natural, but they don't. And a lot of things that feel natural to people that they want to do, like, for example, just stretching or just maybe like singing out loud or, or having a dance or um, a lot of the things that autistic people do, like stimming and things like that, feel very natural to do, but are perceived as being a completely unnatural and weird thing to do. So that's sort of where these came from. Um, this one um, is more directly looking at um, the sort of gender identity of autistic women. And I read a lot of um, experiences from women of not being at home in their sort of femininity or not, not fully feeling comfortable about the expectations or not fitting in to things um, that society expects of them. Um, or even like people who enjoyed, who, in, who enjoyed sort of being in this um, feminine sort of expression of things, but feeling like they fall short of something. Um, so look, after looking and reading it, stuff like that, I started making these sketches um, of myself in my mum's clothes. And I was thinking about um, like that classic sort of experience when you're a child and you like try on your parents' clothes and you think that you look really grown up or you just imagine sort of like, oh, this is what I'll, I'll do when I grow up. I'll, I'll put these sort of clothes on and this is how I would do or like, um, like little girls if they put on like a wedding dress or things like that. Um, so I just found that like sort of interesting to imagine like putting on clothes as an adult and then not fitting and this sort of image of just not fitting into society or like you're putting on a costume to put on this sort of front to go out and be natural in society but maybe only you can see that the, the shoes are not fitting on you or maybe the shoes do fit but you think that they don't fit or people can see that they don't fit or something's not just something's not quite right or something's not quite comfortable in what you're doing or what you think you should be doing so yeah I was kind of trying to yeah look at all those sorts of ideas and in these sketches. So I made, I made some drawings like that. And then I made this um, painting in oil on paper. Um, and then the background was sort of like, I was thinking again about um, just a social environment and like a nightclub or a bar or whatever, or somewhere where you might be dressed up like that. Um, and then once I made it on the paper, I thought I didn't want to make it again. Um, so I stuck it on this wood um, and then I painted like a sort of wallpaper on the background um, and I wanted to make it look a bit like it was stuck like on a wall or it was like a snapshot from a night out or something um, or maybe it was like a like a mirror and 
So this view of the legs is like you're looking into the mirror at this little cut off bit, which is like focusing on the wrong thing, the thing that is wrong. It's, it's just focusing on this one element. So we don't know what's going on in the rest of the figure, but the shoes not fitting is like the focus of this sort of view. Um, and then following on from that, I had this painting, um, which is on cam, um, yeah, which is on canvas, um, called Stage Fright. Um, so it's the same sort of thing again, but a few more elements, um, more obvious. Um, I did this drawing where I just drew myself in this dress that was um, my mum's and it was like too big for me. Um, but I'd drawn it from a weird perspective. And then when I got to the end, I realised like, oh, I've drawn this. You know, when you get to the end of a life drawing, you think, why have I had my paper like completely the wrong way? So you end up with a weird perspective on it. But then I realised that I'd drawn it. So I had like these little tiny legs. And then again, it made me think of the the trying on the parents' clothes and um, like, I quite like this weird sort of Frankenstein body that I'd made in this sketch of myself. Um, that it was like an adult body and then going into these little tiny legs. Um, so I sort of, I took that sketch and then I did this painting from it and sort of, I didn't want the painting to be me because I thought that would just take away from the ideas and research that I'd done looking at other autistic women's experiences of um, feeling like uncomfortable in, in feminine clothes and sort of not comfortable with the having to mask and like put on this costume and things like that. Like some things which I do identify with, but then a lot of which is not my experience at all. So I changed the body a lot and made it sort of, I wanted it to be ambiguous. Like I didn't want it to be completely female, but I didn't want it to be obviously like, I didn't, like, like, a, like a man wearing a dress or anything. I just wanted it to be like completely androgynous and just, just a body really, like a body with a, with a clothing that just doesn't fit on it or is just hanging off or like, um, yeah, with these little sort of legs that are supposed to be kids' legs. And then um, I also like, I wanted to make the hair sort of like, so it looked like a wig. So you're in this sort of complete costume. It's, it's not you at all. It's, it's just a costume that you've put on and it's not, it's not sitting right on you. Um, and I think again, like not putting the shoes on here because um, I didn't, yeah, I didn't want to, even though, the whole theatre of things, um, like this putting on a costume and putting on a show to be socially acceptable is where I was going. In this painting, I didn't really want to put the shoes back on because I thought it made it too theatrical. Um, so I just left the shoes off and I kind of like that barefoot, childish sort of image. Um, and the background, again, I... I put all these neon sort of colours, um, like as if there's some sort of party or like lights coming. Um, so you could read, like I said, like there could be an, a narrative between them, but it doesn't, it's not necessarily a narrative. Like it could be the same person in all of the paintings, but it, it could equally be multiple people in different days or whatever. Um, so then, oh, that's a close up of that. So then that leads me on to this one, um, which is on canvas as well, um, called uh, A Cat May Look at a King, and then in brackets, Outside the Club. So um, this one's really like, I wanted to make the theater of, I guess, social events and experiencing um, social interactions, just like completely I don't know, bright and chaotic. Um, so there's, and again, I wanted it to be really ambiguous. Um, I wanted there to be ways to read it in a really positive 
way like this is a really fun and um you know like like theater like like a fun theater like a this is a really like um raucous cabaret sort of setting and everyone's having a great time um but I also wanted there to be ways to read it in like this is awful this is you know this this is too much going on and is chaotic and that sort of thing um so again it's like the legs coming through with the um with the shoes that don't fit um but there's sort of like a there's sort of like a playful element to the to the figure um that she could be she could be enjoying herself or she could be sort of putting on the veil and putting on the costume and acting the part for the environment that they're in. Um, so I built the environment, like, again, looking at the forests that I'd put in the other paintings and some more paintings that will follow, um, that it's sort of like um, this, like, comfort in natural spaces but I also wanted it to be I wanted to make the whole environment here like a a sort of dream world like a mishmash of lots of different things like um so it could be trees but it could also be just like cloths coming down um and the sort of um office furniture that's like dotted there and the ceiling and this sort of very normal office sort of way. It's just making like an ambiguous environment that it could be, it could be any one of those places. It could be like a festival or a nightclub um, or an office. And um, it could be a great time or it could be a, a terrible time. Um, and the, the animals as well is sort of like another ambiguous element that um, a lot of autistic people like find a lot of comfort in animals. Um, I think pretty much every other autistic person that I've talked to um, has some sort of deep relationship with animals. Um, it's usually um, like a good one, but I also wanted to make the point here with the dogs that they could be, they could be doing something benevolent, you know, in getting rid of the terrible misfitting shoe. Um, or they could be doing something awful by causing like a a problem and causing some sort of traumatic event. Um, uh, what else? Oh, and also there's um, the girl on the phone just sitting there. Um, sort of, I wanted to, I, I sort of thought maybe I, I didn't know if I wanted to put that in, but then I, I liked it in the end. I thought, no, I'll leave it there because it was sort of, um, like this idea of what we should be doing and, and how people are perceived as being um, having a good time or, or, they're, or they're in this emotional state or whatever. Um, and sometimes people are just, people, people are perfectly happy um, and you're just misreading them. Um, so it was sort of, yeah, I wanted to put this little element in that, I thought people might interpret as, oh, you know, this person's not having a great time. They're just sat there doing whatever on their phone when what it could be is that they're just there on their phone, they're perfectly happy and they're just looking at something for five minutes to sort of center themselves or, you know, there's not always, there's not always like the first sort of read on things that it is, is what is going on really. Um, Oh, and yeah, so I made um, the sort of red things at the front that was sort of intentional to look like a, a sort of stage curtain and everything. Um, yeah. Uh, so following on from that, um, oh, that's just a close up there with like some of the stuff in the background, like the people as if there's like a huge party or whatever and these sort of legs at the side, like we don't know what's happening there. Um, so this one, uh, just take some water. This one um, was actually like the first picture that I made for the whole show. Um, I just sat down and I thought, um, 
Well, the first thing I'm going to make a picture about is meltdowns. And then I just thought I'll just do it. Um, and it started off being like a figure, um, which was sort of wrapped up in a, in like a, a, a blanket sort of thing. Um, and then I drew the room around it, which I don't know, I just did it really intuitively. And I sort of thought about this, imagining like a really neutral and calm environment. Um, and then I took a sketch of a tree that I'd done with blossom on it um, and just put that outside the room um, and just made it into this sort of like really calming room. Um, but then I changed the figure because I thought it just didn't feel right. And I just kept adding loads of paint onto it um, and just making it into this big sort of like knobbly, like squishy sort of form. Um, like a like a sort of like creature um and I wanted to make it a bit like yeah like a sort of like creature that's facing away and um it's sort of this idea that this is what you you're perceived as if you have this sort of breakdown in society that you've become this sort of like weird little entity in the space um, that's neither, neither positive or negative. It's, it's like, it's like you're just like this little creature which is glowing, but also um, there's something like dark in there as well. Just that sort of, I wanted to make a painting that was, sort of translating these ideas about it's not it it's not a completely chaotic thing that happens like it is when someone has a meltdown like it might be to them what's going like what's going through their their mind and their emotions but it can also seem like a very still sort of thing it can be like you know there's there's nothing perceptibly um traumatic in the environment like this room um so it was yeah sort of making this weird ambiguous environment about you know this this there's no way of really telling what was causing that and and yeah um so move on from that one um and then these ones were um so I read about, I was reading about um, people's interests because I didn't really want to do anything about like my interests because, um, I, you know, the work is already painted and I'm pretty interested in that. <laughs> um, I, I started looking up um, other autistic women's um, interests, like, you know, uh, specific interests. Um, and I was reading about this woman who was just... Um, talking about how she really liked playing the slime. Um, and then I was thinking a lot about um, these ideas behind um, people um, being labeled as either high functioning or low functioning and these sort of things. Um, and so I made a picture, um, I, I started looking at pictures of slime um, and then I made this painting of the slime, and then I was thinking about these these labels, and then thinking about how you know this woman might be perceived in a certain way because she in she enjoys playing with slime, and this is like one of her hobbies and pastimes. And then how differently I would be perceived for playing around with paint, and like to me, they don't seem very like dissimilar. It's the same thing, but it's, you know, it's quite frustrating that like I would be perceived as like this, this activity that I'm doing is highly intellectual or whatever, but it, but it's not, it's like, to me, it's the same thing. We're just playing with these like materials and it's just the same thing. So I made some other paintings. Um, actually, I should have put that in the slideshow because I had another one previously that I did like this first one here with like 
the pink coral on it. Um, I actually made that based on another painting that I did back in 2018 or 2017. Um, that I was just messing around with paint and I was just like flicking it all over the um, all over the, the card. And I had I had quite a few paintings that I made like that in that time that were just sort of like just pushing colours around and just like until I was happy with how they looked. Um, and then the same for this grey one as well. Um, I was just, I just got a lot of paint um, and then mixed it with a lot of sand, stand oil and then just poured it on there. And then I dripped a lot of um, turps with like, like, like paint that was really, really, really thin with turps and then just like dripped it on there and you get these weird sort of um, little bubbles in there of, um, of like colour and they're, they're sort of like lake patterns. Um, but then I accidentally stepped on the painting and that's why there's like a big gouge out of it. Um, but then it turned out to be um, like a happy accident because I much prefer it that way now. So I sort of like pulled all of that edge off and then just um, left it like that. Um, whoops. Uh, so this next one um, is, um, say it in your own way, but use our language. Um, I think I just put, I just put the title on it because a lot of the time I come up with little sentences like that. Um, and then I just want to attach them to an image, but it doesn't necessarily mean that inside the image is exactly the same thing as the title. So I just made this, um, from imagination and memory, I was thinking about my cycle home from the from the studio, um, and about the starting point of the project as well. Where before I decided to make stuff all about um, autistic experience, I was thinking a lot about maybe I'll do landscapes and um, nighttime landscapes. Um, this sort of like alone time um, and this idea of just being comfortable being alone in the landscape and just having this quiet solitude um, and so I made it up and I just put this little light in there like this sort of what's going on and is there a little thing over there to be seen um, uh, but just wanted to make like a quiet mood um, and I sort of thought that it would be interpreted in a in some sort of way that it was like a dark painting or something something bad was happening in it but um, it's actually it came from somewhere that was like completely the opposite um, which I then thought that's really cool because there's a lot of misconception just in general like not even with autistic people that like being if you if you're alone then you must be you know um lonely or unhappy or something um so this was a pain just celebrating that there are really nice times where you can just be alone in a cold wintry dark landscape and everything's fine and it's it's like a like a sense of curiosity and just you know a nice calmness um, and then this one is like is similar, but it also this one comes like directly from a memory um, of being in Portugal um, when I was I went briefly like traveling, and um, I found it funny in retrospect um, that I'd come to this to this this country and just like to do the whole, like, I'm young and traveling around thing. But as soon as I got there, um, I just immediately like fell back into my normal daily routine without even like thinking about it. And this was just like my walk back from the supermarket to the hostel where I was working. Um, and it was just a really, like, I just remember the landscape being really beautiful. Um, but it was, 
yeah, again, that sense of like, well, I'm, I'm, I'm traveling and that doesn't, that doesn't necessarily mean that um, just because I'm doing these sort of activities alone doesn't necessarily mean that I haven't chosen to do that. And I'm just, you know, happily being alone in this, in this sort of landscape. Um, yeah. Um, that's just a picture of the installation um, in the bar. So that was another thing as well about the whole body of work that I really liked was the fact that it was in, in the bar. Um, I think it really fed into the work as I was making it, knowing that it was going into a, a social space and like, um, uh, like an, an intense social space for some people. Um, so I really liked that, um, that the, the things going on in the image might be reflected back at people that were looking at them and might have been in similar situations that were like being played out in the paintings. Um, which leads on to the text that I put up. Um, and these were sort of, I had all these little tiny snippets of repetitive phrases. Um, to begin with, I thought that I would put some text up that would be um, echolalia, um, which is like people repeating um, phrases either out loud or like in their head, um, which quite often um, is an experience of autistic people. Um, but I decided that I would make it sort of more of a um, like clash between inner and um, outer dialogue. So like dialogue that you would hear in, in the bar, but also a dialogue that you might not hear this going on inside, um, inside when people are experiencing the space. Um, so I just put them like and different different sizes as well. So there were some like that were really small, um, like these small ones on this pink that was like on the bar and in like really like out of the way places, um, sort of on the on the floor close to the skirting board and like up on the ceiling and then really big ones that are at sort of eye level, um, going around the pillars and stuff. Um, just like, to make this sort of, I guess, like a, a little conversation that's happening that's either really, really hidden or really like there and loud. Um, and then I had this little paragraph that I wrote thinking about um, Aesop's fable, um, which is the story of the sun and the wind. Um, but I, caught, I sort of made this little weird monologue about um, what's wrong with it. Um, and even though I've used the story to explain to people some situations or um, it's been helpful, I just, when I was making the work, I just reflected on it and thought, actually, you know, this, it's, it's not always about sort of... Um, communicating to or educating children especially because I heard this story when I was in school um about educating them you know that oh you should be kind to people because um you know that way you know you'll all get on better and and you know you'll you'll get things sort of you you'll get your own way more if you're if you're like if you're socially good with people instead of like commanding people to do things and whatever um it's like that same thing of, you know, you'll catch more flies with honey than you will with vinegar. Um, but that, that's not, that, that doesn't really like help or apply to everybody, does it? Because, you know, a lot of people really love vinegar and it's this sort of, I know it sounds really like absurd and like a childish way to put things, but um, there are literally people that are doing no you know, they're, they're, they're not conducting themselves in a way that's harmful to anyone. They're just, they're just relaxing, being themselves and living their best life. Um, but they're not, they're never going to take their, their coat off when it's hot because they're just not hot. They're just not warm. Um, and I kind of related it directly to um, 
experiences of autistic people who don't experience environments the same way. Like a lot of people on the spectrum have really intense um, feeling towards temperature and they have really, um, or, or they just they just don't have much feeling of temperature at all. So you might get people that are just walking around in winter with like a shorts and t-shirt on. Um, so it's sort of, yeah, like something that covers, I wanted to make in this, this little thought about the Aesop's fable, like um, something that covers all of that, you know, generally speaking sort of thing that we have drummed into us, like all through school and, and life really is that, you know, generally people are like this, but they're not. Um, and then the end part, um about the people might only have their underwear on um was another thing that I was thinking about um that's quite that is quite typical of autist of some autistic people that like um you'll always find the small detail that could be true or th there's no reason why it, it couldn't be true or I heard that somewhere so that is something that exists and we shouldn't ignore it um this sort of not not wanting to gloss over any 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 possibilities or things like that and um, and also sort of like a um not in a bad way but a, a childlike thing to say that you know if a child had, had heard that something could happen you know like um, if someone were to say a saying, um, you know, it's raining cats or, and, and dogs, and then someone would say, well, it's only a saying, and then they might say, oh, well, I, I heard this um, news article and a cat really did fall out of a plane or something, so it was raining a cat or, or a dog or something. It was just this sort of, like, really pedantic sort of um, idea that, you know, something could happen like that and it's not completely unheard of and that's a valid opinion. Um, yeah. So that, yeah, that kind of clears the, everything up and got to the end there. So I realised that my way of going through things was a bit like hectic and chaotic. So if there's any questions, that, that's fine.